Hi, I'm Derek Davis and welcome to the Blanche E.B. House Museum. We're here in the main exhibit room and the exhibit that's here is called Ceremony and Community. And what we want to talk about is how Blanche Ely used those things, ceremony and community, to make her students more interested in learning. To kind of put ceremony in perspective, I want to talk a little bit about the Pompano community. Now, from a wonderful writer whose name was Merceline Aldrich, she wrote a book that talked about Pompano from about the turn of the century to the 1930. In there, she tells of what the community was like, tells us that in the season, you had a, a swell community with, and when I say swell, I mean it had a lot of people in it because you had tourists, you had a lot of workers who had come to work on the farms to harvest crop. So it was, the community kind of like swelled up and got real big during that time period. So during that time period, the type of things that you would go to to celebrate were things like you would have the circus to come to town. So you have the elephants to come through and uh, the clowns and all of that during that time period. You also had the Silent Screen, which was a black vaudeville troupe that came through and they did acts that the whole community, and, I mean, whatever color you were, you came to those type of events. You had things like medicine shows, where you have guys come with these magic elixirs, which were basically just alcohol drinks that they would sell to people. You had wandering uh, church singers and things like that would come through the community. But that was during the time during the season where everything was grand. There was a lot of money around, a lot of work to be done, and you had these grand type of events. But the question is, what happens during those off-season periods? And remember, the off-season periods were also the school season period. So we can see from her talk what kind of things that they get at the school. What was the school doing during those off-season? And you'll find that during those off-season, you see that people in the community, the children in the community, were the focus of the ceremonies, especially at Blanche Ely. You can see Blanche Ely and how, then how she was using ceremony and community to actually make the children more inspired to learn. I kind of call it like she was thinking out of the hamper. And I mean thinking out of the hamper because during that other season, most of the children were involved in harvesting crops. So now what she, what she would do is you see things like these crowns and other things that she would create to make these wonderful ceremonies for them. And I'd still say they were community oriented ceremonies and community-oriented things, because when you look closely at these beautiful crowns that you made, you can see that they're basically school-made, handmade. They're not something that they sent off for. So you have people in the community getting involved with them. And I also believe that we start looking at some of the ceremonies, the pageants you have, you see all these beautiful dresses. And at first you would think, ah, they were mixing their homemade things with these beautiful dresses. But then you have to think that most of the dresses that people wore during those days were created by some of the black seamstresses that were in the community. Seamstresses like Florence Ally, which is another building that's a part of the Pompano cultural event. Now I mentioned Mrs. Ally and her as a seamstress and a dressmaker, but you would have found in the community many people who manufactured all types of things. So you would have found a person who could make shoes, they could make handbags, they could make gloves, they could make the dresses, they could have made everything to be a part of it, as well as making the flowers and the other things that went along with her ceremony that she had for the students. So it was bringing the community together and getting all of them involved in this process of making the students feel better about themselves, better about what they can become in life, and how they can actually be not just bean pickers, but they could be a community that had a full line of services. Now that we've talked about some of the things that they made, I want to talk about how they were used in ceremonies. So we had ceremonies like graduations. We had ceremonies like prom queens. There was a ceremony that was called Miss Blanche Ely. There were things like the May Day celebrations. There were parades that they would have, that they would dress up and show that they were really into their community and were appreciated their community. So we have samples of all of those types of things that they had. And one thing I have to mention about Miss Ely, because they did this at many schools, we often mentioned that Miss Ely actually was a great fundraiser. So an event like a Miss Ely was also a fundraising event. You, the girl who raised the most money for that event was the one who was actually usually crowned. So it was a way to also to use these ceremonies to actually to get money for the school. 
So it was a, all the community working together to make things great for the rest of the community. Uh, thank you for joining us today and showing a little bit about the Blanche House Museum and showing how what a great community it was and a great community it is. How it had the factors of using people in the community to keep making it a better and better place. Thank you.